Hey there, this is Nick from Income Digs, and today we're diving into the world of invoicing. So if you're ever confused about what an invoice is, how to create one, or how to customize it and maximize its usefulness within QuickBooks Online, you're in the right place. We're gonna go back to basics, and we're gonna talk about exactly how to do all that within QuickBooks Online, specifically thinking about how to do this for those real estate investors out there like me. So getting into things here, what we're gonna talk about is just really generally what is in an invoice. Make sure we're on the same page as far as when you create an invoice. What does that do to your books? What does that do to your revenue? Revenue, your balance sheet. We're going to talk about our setup and how we want to have some things in place ahead of time to really save us time as we're creating these invoices. We're going to look at the old versus the new invoice layouts within QuickBooks Online. So as of this recording, QuickBooks Online is experimenting with a new layout. So we're going to look at that versus the old way, kind of bounce back and forth, talk about pros and cons, and we're going to ultimately save time with recurring transactions as well. All right, so this piece of software, this feature within QuickBooks Online has come a long way in the last few years. So we're going to dive in to make sure that you and your business are getting the absolute most out of it. So let's get into QuickBooks and get right down to it. So let's start with what is an invoice. Invoice. Okay, what is an invoice at its core? An invoice is really us indicating that somebody owes us money. Okay, so if I issue an invoice, that's me saying that me and my business is owed money by somebody. That's a customer. It needs to be a customer out there. So in the case of a real estate investor, that can be a tenant, right? That can be a tenant who owes us money. And what does that do to our reporting when we issue an invoice? What an invoice does, it's really specifically related to what's called accounts receivable. So if we create an invoice, basically we're going to say that our our revenue goes up and our accounts receivable goes up. So I'm going to go to a quick balance sheet, which kind of has not much on it at all here. And I'm just going to create a new invoice so we can see what happens. This is in 2018, just so I can have kind of an empty set of books here. I'm going to create an invoice, just a random one almost, uh, to, to just show you exactly where it goes. And it, it doesn't really even matter what this is for right now. So don't pay attention to too much of the details other than I'm making it in 2018. And I'm just going to put in something here, really almost anything, property management, $15,000, whatever. Okay. I'm going to save and close that. And let's see what happens to my balance sheet and my income statement when I create that invoice. So I just created that invoice and my accounts receivable increases to 15,000. My net income, if I drill down into that, has increased by 15,000 as well. Now this is me doing accrual based accounting. So this is saying that we're recognizing the transaction at the date of the invoice as opposed to when we get paid for it. So that's accrual versus cash. I personally love to run my business in accrual based accounting, both from the revenue side of things and the expense side of things. I like to recognize those transactions as of the date of either the invoice or in the expense side, the bill. It helps me to be a little bit more on top of my cash flow. All right, so we're recognizing revenue and then we're recognizing the accounts receivable. As soon as I'm paid for this, the funds are going to go from accounts receivable. So I'm going to I'm going to kind of mock up a payment here. I'm going to say that I received this money. It got deposited into my checking account. All right. Once I do this, it's going to clear out my accounts receivable to zero and put that money in my checking account right up here. So accounts receivable goes to zero, checking account increases. That's really the essence of what an invoice is. So I wanna make sure we're on the same page as far as that is concerned, right? Invoice increases our accounts receivable. Once we get paid, that accounts receivable goes down. Within QuickBooks Online, we can manage all of our invoices right here. I go to sales, go to invoices. This will show you all your open invoices this is where you can create new ones, all that cool stuff. Before we get into creating some invoices, I wanna go to the account and settings, make sure that we're spending a little bit of time thinking about our invoices before we create them. So let's go that there from account and settings here and we'll go to sales. And right here, we got a whole bunch of stuff we can do with sales and invoices. Now it says sales form content. That's mostly our invoices. This also relates to estimates, but generally speaking, this is our, our invoicing. We're gonna customize our look and feel in a second, but let's just get into some of these specifics. So your preferred invoice terms, okay? Now, when you create an invoice, are you typically requesting that that money be paid immediately or are you giving your customers 15, 30, 60 days? You can always change this on an individual invoice, but you probably wanna set this to be whatever is most common for you. For me and my tenants, they get invoice on the first of the month, it's due on the first of the month, their rent. Shipping, I'm not gonna be using that uh, for, for my purposes for real estate investing. If you're actually selling goods, you might wanna do that. Preferred delivery method, send later makes sense. You're gonna be sending invoices typically. Email's going to be the way we're doing most of these things. And then a few other things here. Custom transaction numbers, I don't find a need for these, but you could do this. This would 
say that you can start your invoice numbering from a certain level. I just use whatever defaults in QuickBooks Online. Service date's not a bad one. I'm gonna turn that on for now so we can see what that is. That's basically saying the service I performed, here's the date I performed it. So if you're doing property management, it makes sense. If you're doing renovations for other folks, it makes a lot of sense to have the actual date of that service on your invoice so that you know it's easier to track. You could potentially offer a discount. You could track deposits. You could accept tips. You could indicate tags as well. So I'm gonna turn these three off. I'll keep tags on. I don't use them too much, but I like to have it available to me. And I'll just click save here. Invoice payments, if you're gonna set up your payments, and I recommend you do, uh, you're gonna connect that right there, okay? So you're gonna connect your bank accounts, et cetera. Products and services, we're gonna get into those in a little bit. You wanna turn on your products and services for sure. Here, late fees, this is a really cool thing. This was added a few years ago where, uh, yeah, we wanna automatically add late fees, especially if we're doing this for tenants. Uh, the only small issue with this is there's not a ton of flexibility here, meaning I can either do a flat fee or not. <laughs> I can't do like a flat fee plus a per day. Okay, now you can do that manually on your invoices, but you can't do it automatically here like we're seeing, okay? So I've set up a flat fee of 20 bucks per invoice starting with after a grace period. And here too, I can't even put it like a two, three, four, five, or I can do a five. So that's a little bit of an issue for me, but you can always manually do the late fees beyond that. You can do progress invoicing, Reminders, great idea that used to not have this, so you can automatically send reminders when invoices are due. That's a really good idea. All right, um, and then the other thing we wanna look at is our, our look and feel. And I think this is important just to spend a little bit of time on to understand what the style of your invoice looks like. If somebody were to print an invoice, what does it look like? This is a super easy editing tool where you can get into the template and you can pick one kind of pre-created as far as how it's going to look and then edit it from there. So I got this one up here. Uh, you can add your logo, of course, I recommend you do that, small, medium, or large, where it shows up, left, right, center. You can add your custom colors, so you're gonna take whatever your branding is, makes a lot of sense, right, to use that. Um, I just lost mine, but there we go. Uh, and then your fonts, etc. all right? Your content, this is important as well, what shows up in there, so I can click this and just edit You know your business name. If I have my logo, I probably don't need my business name on there, You know, it's your call. Phone number, email. And then just whatever you call your stuff as well, your form numbers, go ahead and spend some time thinking about this and customizing this. You can always change it on, a, on an invoice by invoice basis, but it makes sense to have something standardized. Then the last piece that a lot of my students don't spend enough time on is thinking about when the email gets sent, what does it look like? What do I say to that recipient? So when we send an invoice, we're gonna, I always like to attach the PDF. That's always a good idea. All right, this is what the subject's gonna say, new invoice from, and then here's my invoice number. Greeting, dear, first name, we appreciate your business, all that stuff. And then you can also customize your reminder emails. And this is what the preview is gonna look like, all right? So looking good, generally speaking, spend some time thinking about that. Now the other thing we have to think about is our products and services. And this is basically, what do we sell? If you're a property manager, you might just have property management. If you're invoicing for rent, you're gonna to wanna to spend some time uploading or adding your list of rents for each of your properties that you are renting out. So this is 122 Buffalo Street, apartment B rent. I've got a category for rent, I sell it, it's got a price, and now when I create an invoice, it'll come in there nice and neat for me. Let's do some invoicing. Let's see what this actually looks like. I'm gonna to go to the invoicing section here. I'm gonna to go to create an invoice. I can do it from here, I can do it from a customer. There's a few different ways. Let's just click this button. And I'm gonna start with a customer. Now your customer, in this case, we're gonna use a tenant, okay? So I have my tenant listed as Juliet. And so Juliet is a tenant of 122 Buffalo Street. So in this case, I'm using a hierarchy where I have a customer of 122 Buffalo Street and then a sub-customer or sub-tenant of Juliet. That would help me to categorize and to group all of my outstanding invoices for that property in one place, whether it's Juliet or other tenants of mine. And what's cool is that it pre-populates the email for that tenant, and I, again, spend some time when you're uploading your list of customers, make sure that email's in there. Online payments, I can decide if I want cards or bank transfer. Now, I could have set that up during my settings. I probably should. I actually set this up on my own uh, actual set of books to do bank transfer by default and cards is on a, you know, as requested basis. And terms due on receipt, which is defaulted. Again, I can always change that on a per invoice basis, but it's defaulting there because that's what I did with my settings. Here's my invoice date, here's my due date. Late fees are currently off, I can turn those on, okay? 
And those will only happen, you know, once it's overdue. Now, the business in the class, that's something specific for the way I've set up my books. I am tracking multiple businesses within QuickBooks Online. That's an advanced technique. If you want to check that out, we have a really detailed video on that. Same with class tracking. I do want to, in addition to I'm capturing, you know, the property here, I like to capture it a second place as well if we can. All right. Here's where that service date comes up. So in this case, it's rent, which is it's applicable here. I'm doing all this in the past 2018. Okay, there's my service date. That's where I provided you the service of rent. What service did I provide? Juliet's in maybe apartment B. So 122 Buffalo Street, apartment B rent. I pull that up, pulls up the default rate. My description is monthly rent. Okay, and I can save that. I can also save and send that. Let me just save it for now because I want to show you the updated layout, okay? So a lot of you are logging into QuickBooks Online and you might be defaulting to the updated layout or you're clicking this button and wondering what it is. I'm just gonna spend a little bit of time with it. The important thing to know here is this does not change any of the back end of the system and how invoicing works. It's just the look and feel of this exact screen, okay? So QuickBooks gets some feedback that, you know, this screen is maybe not as intuitive as it should be. Maybe we need a refresh. So they're trying out this updated layout. I'm gonna click this button to see what it looks like. I'm gonna click update this invoice. Now notice I saved first, okay? That was important, so I saved that first. Although it didn't bring up any of my savings. So that is interesting. I didn't know it would do that. So keep that in mind, but let's just do it like we were doing before. So there's Juliet comes up here. And what this is doing is really, it's almost like a preview. It looks a little bit more like it will print, okay? It's the same information, but it's just a little bit more like it's going to print. So here's my apartment B rent. Now, notice the service date is not in there. That's in interesting to me. This is all new to a lot of us too. So we're kind of all trying this out together. There's my 122 Buffalo Street. Now, if your rate is there, you can always change it. If like the rate was increased or you had an agreement that we're paying more this month, you can of course add more things as well to this, but you can always change that. You do want to set up in your in your um, products and services your default though. All right, here's the payment stuff and it looks like we don't have any of that on uh, yet. Now notice what we're seeing on the right hand side here is a lot of those customization options that I decided to turn on or off in the settings. We can do it here on an individual invoice basis, okay? So we can indicate you know, whether we want to deposit a discount, et cetera. So just because we set it up in the accountant settings to begin with does not mean that's how it's always has to be. And here we have my automation as far as my reminders. Those look good. We're going to talk about recurring invoice in a second. Yeah, that looks pretty good. Let's save and send this and see what happens with it. Actually, I'm just going to bounce over. Email view not available with this temp template. That's interesting to me. PDF view not either. Payer view, okay. This is looks like what they're gonna get when they send it. I'm gonna actually send this to see what it looks like when we receive that email. Now it's giving me a preview. <laughs> Notice it's bringing all this information in from our settings. I'm gonna send that invoice. Now creating the invoice and sending the invoice are two different actions, so you have to be aware of that. If you just create the invoice and they sit in your books, great, I have the accounts receivable, but does your customer know about it? Do they know that they've been requested to pay? Here's my invoice right here. If I'm the recipient, I can grab this and see it. Okay, and I have a nice neat button here. Now, did it attach the PDF? Yes, we clicked that button. We wanted the PDF to attach, that looks good. Interesting that that service date wasn't on that updated layout. That's probably a little glitch that they're gonna have to fix. I'm gonna go to review and pay, and then this from the customer standpoint is where I could come and update you know, my payment. Now, this set of books doesn't have a payment acceptance set up yet, so it's not gonna work, but this is what I would do as the customer. Okay, so let's go into that invoice. And the other thing I wanna talk about is recurring invoices and just managing our whole setup. When I come to invoices here, I can see what's overdue, what's not due yet. I can drill down into them by clicking on them as well. So I can click on this, drill down into it and see what's going on, what's overdue, and I can batch them and potentially send a reminder or send them again. Okay. We already showed how to receive a payment kind of manually, meaning they write you a check, they pay some other method. We can simply indicate that we've received that payment. I'm going to just quickly go back to the old layout. Um, actually, let's see here. So notice that these are overdue just the last 12 months. That's what this filter is doing. I have this one way old, so I'm just going to go, um, it's actually not going to show me at all, will it? Um, so I'm just going to go to the customer because these are so old. I'm going to drill down into... Juliet, and then there's my list of transactions. I'm just gonna do all invoices. All right, we see those coming in here. 
I got this invoice for 950. These are the two that I created, one in the old view, one in the new view. Let me go back to the old view for a second. If you're in the new view and you don't like it, you wanna you know, be back in the old way of doing things, uh, you just click this old layout button and it's gonna bounce you back over there. Okay, I'm gonna click nothing on the feedback for now. And this old layout might be just a little bit easier to work with. Maybe you're used to it. That service date comes back up here. Let's talk about recurring invoices. I want you to at least be open to this idea, especially for tenants, okay? So make recurring is gonna save you a ton of time for tenants who pay every single month. So you can create your template. And so we can call it, you know, Juliet's monthly rent. And this is a potentially confusing part, but important. How soon before do we create the invoice? And I like to create my invoices about 10 days in advance. What this means is that as we approach the first of the month, let's say that we're approaching the first of April, it's going to create and send this invoice, okay, on April 20th. It's not due yet. It's due on the first of April, but the customer is going to get it. The tenant's going to get it. And often they're going to pay it right away. And it's a great way to kind of entice your tenants to pay early. If they don't pay it right away, that's no big deal. They'll get the reminders after that first. But I always like to create mine 10 days in advance. Who's the customer? What's the email? Automatically send emails. That's crucial. Include unbilled charges is another good idea. We can track billable expenses. We have some videos on that. And then they'll automatically be coming in here. We're in a default to bank transfers coming in. The interval monthly on the first day, every one month. This is the date of the invoice, okay? So even though we're gonna create it 10 days in advance, the date of the invoice is gonna be right here on this interval. If you know the lease is ending at a specific date, you can set a, a due date here or an end date or you can stop it after you know 12 months, 12 occurrences. All right, here's my billing address, due on receipt. You can default your business as well. The one thing that's not gonna really work for recurring invoices is the service date, right? So every single month it changes. You'd probably leave it blank here, maybe even take it off completely if you're doing recurring. It's just not going to make any sense and the system won't automatically update it. Creating these saved invoices is a really good way to kind of automate your process. I didn't save that one. I'm just gonna go to my list right here, recurring transactions. You can do this for invoicing. You can do this as well for bills. Uh, let me just do type. So I have all these different invoices you can set up to automatically send to your tenants. And this is just a really crucial piece of automating your entire system. You set it up once, it's recurring, they're gonna get it ahead of time, hopefully pay ahead of time. You got your reminder set up as well. And then you build in a little part of your workflow. You maybe gotta go in there and nudge some people that aren't responding to the reminders, send them a separate email or text or something. That has to happen too. That's what the accounts receivable portal's for. So you can see what's really hot, what's overdue, and what do we really gotta focus on. So that's really all about invoicing. We talked about the old layout, the new layout, and how we can specifically set up these invoices so that they go out to our tenants so that we get paid. It's the essential reason we're in business is that we make some money somewhere down the road. If you like this video, I encourage you to subscribe so that you're up to date on all the new videos that come out. Leave a comment, leave a question, I answer everything that comes through on YouTube. Also check out my in-depth course, Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. We go end to end on the entire setup of QuickBooks Online for your real estate investing business. So if you're an investor yourself or you're a bookkeeper working for an investor, I encourage you to check that out in addition to all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com. I'm so glad you joined me here on this video and I'll see you on the next one.